Is astrology a guide to aid us in mastering the universe? This is the Cosmic Community Podcast with Galactic Ambassador Stacy Dredd. Hey everyone, thanks for being tuned in to KPOV 88.9 FM, your high desert community radio in Bend, Oregon. I hope you're having a good day. This is Stacy Dredd, Galactic Ambassador in the Cosmic Community. That's our astrology program here Tuesdays, normally 4.30 to 5 p.m., but today a very special edition, 4 o'clock to 5 p.m., and we're going to discuss the week planetary and lunar influences, discuss how we can work and live within the cycles of the universe to create a more benevolent life for all. So thank you so much for making time and space in your day-to-day to receive these messages. And I was kind of bad last week. I didn't let anyone know, but this is going to be archived and available to listen to in its entirety um, at the Cosmic Community Astrology Show page on kpov.org. Also, you can follow me on Facebook and YouTube, the Cosmic Community Astrology. And I'm going to dive into this week's astrology. I do have the full hour. So um, this week will come first. I'm going to do also a May monthly heads up breakdown of all the astrology in May. And then also I do have a guest DJ, a, I guess you could call her a training, a DJ in training, although she has so much experience um, speaking and being on the microphone. Um, I have Whitney here. You're going to hear more about her and why she came into the cosmic community today. And um, so, um, yeah, lots to do. Whitney, thanks for, for being here. So, uh, today coming at you on April 25th, we are in the last week of April and we are in the first week of Taurus season. We are also in the midst of one of the two eclipse cycles that we have in the year. So, eclipses last uh, a month and we get two, we get the new moon and the full moon. So, last week we had the uh, full moon or excuse me, the the new moon in Aries and the solar eclipse in Aries. And this was uh, at 29 degrees of Aries. We discussed a lot about that last week, but we are in the midst. They call this the eclipse portal. We're in the middle of them because next week we have the full moon in Scorpio and that's the lunar eclipse on May 5th. So this is the, this is the wormhole that we're traveling through. This is the, 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 the tunnel you know, it's it's wisping by. We're we're moving through, and there's a lot going on all around us when you're in the middle of um, of eclipses like this. So uh, stay, you know, stay stay tuned. Make sure you're taking care of yourself if theme, things do seem to be adding up quickly or becoming overwhelming at a fast pace, or there's just a lot of stimuli around, and it's just like we. Coming over stimulating, you know, that's, that is absolutely a case when we are, uh, working with eclipse energy and eclipses are massive, massive slingshots. This is, uh, energetically the universe giving us an opportunity to travel through a wormhole, go literally from one side of the universe to the other. And so applying this to our lives, you know, this is an opportunity to to then use this to move from one point to the next. So you have a goal out in front of you and it seemingly, you know, takes a lot of steps to get there. But during eclipse season, we can actually take a very short time to get somewhere. So uh, knowing this, you know, it's loaded um, in the astrology. We have a lot of energy uh, in Taurus right now. We just had our um, our movement of the sun 
into Taurus. And this is the second sign of the zodiac. This is an earth sign. This is the earth sign. This is the sign that we plant all the seeds under. This is the sky that we, um, watch all of the sprouts, you know, start to come up and, and, and provide a nurturing opportunity for our gardens, for the garden of our life. We can plant seeds and really have a good backing energy when Taurus, when the sun is in Taurus, to then nurture. Taurus is a Venus ruled sign. Venus is the planet that rules the sign of Taurus. And Venus is a lover. She is a lover. She is all about relationships. She is all about um, taking care of her relationships, taking care of her relations. And Taurus is is a definitely uh, uh, one of these signs that you can hone in when we have a lot of energy here. We can hone in on, okay, let's put some energy into our relationships. Venus is also about balance and harmony. So we can bring this balance and harmony to our relationships, to all all these different places of our lives uh, when we're working with this um, with this sign that is ruled by the planet of Venus. Of course, she's moved on. She's she was hanging out in her home sign for a while, but she's in Gemini now. But still in Taurus with the Sun. We have the North Node. The North Node is all about things that we are trying to bring into our lives. This is the direction that we want to head. This is looking into the future and and having those goals and aspirations. But sometimes the North Node, we may not even be tuned in to what we may need all the time. And the North Node can bring things in that seem like, hmm that came out of nowhere or, oh, geez, I didn't realize I needed that or, uh, hey, I really don't need that. And then later on, it starts to make a little bit of sense. We also have Mercury retrograde. Uh, this one goes out to DJ Preet. Thank you so much, brother, for um, being tuned into the energy and, uh, and giving a little shout out to the cosmic community on your show beforehand. Really appreciate that. And he's just asking about the Mercury retrograde. So we've got the Mercury, uh, retrograde happening in Taurus right now. This is happening between like 25 and 10 degrees or something like that of Taurus. So, um, Mercury is the planet that rules our communication and our mind. And we may be slowing down the mental state and our communication. Our lives may have slowed down a little bit physically because of this Mercury retrograde. If you think that uh, you're forgetting a lot of things or, um, geez, those emails just aren't going through, all those things, just chalk it up to Mercury retrograde grade. Um, but this is uh, interesting. The sun is going to be um, right here working in this retrograde cycle. So we're going to be having a lot of illumination for things that we need to go back and redo and reconfigure and recheck. And then also we have, yep, even more Taurus energy, um, Uranus. Uranus has been working in Taurus for years already and a couple of years to come still. I think till 2026 is the the year when, when Uranus finally leaves Taurus. But um, this makes... Uh, for interesting energy in Taurus because um, Uranus likes to shake things up. Uranus is like a groundbreaker, an earth shatterer. You know, things happen quickly and, you know, kind of spontaneously and change happens really fast. And Taurus is like not really into change. So very, very interesting energies going on in Taurus. And we are well into this. We're going to continue continue uh, working with these energies, of course. Um, and as far as this week goes, it's really relatively a fairly quiet week in the astrology. There's not a ton of huge aspects going on. Um, the moon is going to move from Cancer um, into Leo. And by the weekend, we're going to have a Virgo moon, a good time to get some cleaning done 
done some organizing at home over the weekend. And then Monday, it's already May. Hey, Whitney. How's it going over there? Hi. Hey. It's going fantastic. I'm very excited to be here. In a radio studio. You like it? I love it. Does it feel good? It feels so good. Cool. (laughs) Yeah, it's buzzing right now for sure. It's real buzzing. Yeah, we're making it happen. I feel like it's kind of risky to have my first time be during Mercury Retrograde. Ooh. You know? Ooh. (laughs) It's like all the communication, right? It's like, what could happen? Yeah, definitely. I I can understand that. But, you know, Mercury retrograde is also a great time for digging into the details, if that's something that you like to do. And we are chatting here in the cosmic community for an extra length of time. They give me a full hour during the drives here. So get to cover a little extra material. I have Whitney here in the studio, and she's got some uh, notes that she's been taking, and she is interested in the astrology, it seems like. Oh, yeah. Big time. That is awesome. Good. Um, So we're going to hop into May astrology and just kind of roll through. Now, we are dealing with our, dealing with our, we're we're working with Mercury retrograde right now. We're working with it. We need to remember to stay positive, you know, when we're talking about working with the energies. And of course, you know, things happen upon us, you know, but we can always react in in certain ways and use these uh, opportunities you know, to take steps up in our life. So that's kind of the way that I see the astrology and work with the astrology. Um, so Mercury retrograde, and, and we are moving into a more retrograde period now on the 1st of May. Pluto is going to station retrograde. This is a long-term six-month uh, cycle that we're going to go through. And as you all maybe remember, we just had Pluto pop out of Capricorn and ingress the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius recently. And this is a 20 year cycle um, because Pluto takes 20 years uh, to move through a sign. And so, uh, very much a, a big time energy shifter for the planet, Pluto being that uh, farthest out planetoid and uh, really influencing the greater kind of zeitgeist of, of the times, you know, if you will, like kind of the, the generational theme. You know, and so Pluto is a representation of things that um, need to be let go of and then also rebirthed. So very much the death and the rebirth cycle included there. And uh, Pluto will be uh, moving back into the sign of Capricorn. So during this retrograde, we're going to still be buttoning up some things. We're going to be like, you know, we've moved out of the town that we finally have been like trying to move out of, but like there's still going to be some some chores that we're going to need to take care of back in that hometown for sure. Like there's going to be some bank accounts that need attention or some, you know, people that you still need to square things up with or, or some, some of your things might even still be there and you need to go back and, and physically get things from this, this place that we have just left. Um, that's just one example, you know, but we're talking about this greater theme in our life. We're going to be actually digging back in and really figuring out how to close these old cycles before truly moving on next year, 2024, within this Pluto cycle. Um, Then we come to May 5th. May 5th is that full moon in Scorpio. This is a a lunar eclipse, and um, this is going to be happening at 1030 a.m. here, uh, Pacific Coast time. And this eclipse is going to be visible in Asia, Africa, Australia, Pacific and Indian Oceans, and Eastern Europe. So we're not actually going to catch this lunar eclipse this time around, but whoo, full moons in Scorpio. Scorpio energy is so deep and so dark and is such a place that we all need to go at times. Full moons, they shine lights into these places. And Scorpio being that deep, dark energy is like the vampire. Ah, no. Now, when did you say that Pluto goes retrograde? This is May 1st. 
Okay, so we're going to have Pluto going retrograde and a Scorpio full moon. Doesn't that feel like double underworld stuff? It sure does. <laughs> it sure does. And let's not uh, forget that we still have Mercury retrograde at this time. So lots of underworld, which is why I came at this with like a, this is like deep and dark. And Pluto is the planet that rules the sign of Scorpio. So... Yeah, yeah, I think you're you're feeling something there. Yeah, and then it's also sandwiched between two eclipses, the mm. solar and the lunar eclipse. So can you get any more potent energy than mm. this? <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, this is like, uh, I discuss working with the energies, but also I feel like if you don't actively work with them, they just kind of like find a way to work in your life and happen sometimes. And it can become very forceful and you're just kind of like, oh, no, man, I kind of knew I needed to deal with that. But then, you know, kind of you get faced with it. And I feel like this full moon could face us with some of those things. Some of the wounds that are a little ugly, right? Some of those things that like we shove them down there for a reason because it's like not fun to work with or whatever. Yeah, they're heavy. They can be painful. Yet it seems like this must all be preparing us for something on the other side, a breakthrough. I mean, you can't go through all this sort of, you know, deep stuff and not come out with something, you know, refreshed, right? No, I, I That's how I choose to step into things, you know. Um, sometimes it can make little sense, right? And then all of a sudden, especially with full moons, some kind of illumination can happen. Boom, you know. So yeah. if it seems like a buildup that's not making sense this time around with the eclipse cycle, the full moon could be the moment that it all kind of makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, have an opportunity to chat a little bit more about that one next week when I'm in on Tuesday at 4.30 regular time here in the Cosmic Community. And then on May 7th, moving through the month of May and the astrology, we have Venus moving into the sign of Cancer. She is catching up to Mars at this point. Mars is in the sign of Cancer. Cancer. Mars is the masculine energy, the masculine planet, uh, really uh, rules our physical body, taking action, doing things, moving from point A to point B, very linear, getting things done. This is the warrior. This is war. This is very much that kind of agitated aggro energy, just getting things done. And Cancer is, is actually a really feminine energy. This is the moon sign. So Mars can, can be a little um, dare I say, confused by his emotions um, while in the sign of cancer. And so we're watching this masculine energy, you know, shift and change every two and a half days because every time that the moon shifts signs, these uh, Mars in the sign of cancer is being affected. The moon, of course, rules the sign of cancer. So Venus is catching up quickly and they're going to be having a conjunction. Soon she'll cruise over the top and they'll have a conversation, but she's fast approaching. Mars um, in this very feminine sign and she could come through and offer him um, some support she could really come through and and uh, and and take his hand and and let him know that everything's you know gonna be okay that there's you know life after the sign of cancer so this is gonna be I think kind of sweet um, I'm excited for these two two planets to be around each other anytime because they just they just tend to have really nice conversations. Um, so tell us about yourself. Um, people know a lot more about about me and less about you. So how what, what kind of got you going with KPOV here and what, what's your what's your goal? Yeah, so I just moved to Bend back in November. And I do a podcast. I have a podcast called Women Waken Podcast, which is based a lot in some of the concepts I focus on as a therapist. I'm a mental health therapist, and I specialize in addiction, eating disorders, trauma, and spirituality. And so on my podcast, it kind of focuses on how can we really start to turn the tides and turn in terms of the things that the way that we view ourselves and the way that we view and treat life. To me, that's the aspect of a the divine feminine. So that's sort of the focus on my show, Women Waken. And I bring a lot of that into my work as a therapist, but I like to speak to it at a broader level. So I started a podcast and have a lot of guests of women who are doing amazing work. And when I moved to Bend, I had a friend come visit who lives in Seattle. And she came to visit and she invited her friend to dinner with us, who is Joe, which I think he has a different, he, some might call him like one drum or something. J-O-D, Joe one drum. <laughs> I don't know what that means. DJ. 
<laughs> so yeah, and so I I told him I had a podcast. And he said, "Well, you should come down to the studio and you know meet some people and see if you'd like to do talk radio stuff." And I said, "Yeah, that sounds awesome." And then you, you randomly showed up with Joe at one of my singing gigs too, I did. and so that's where we had met a few months ago, and um, and then here we are. And here we are. And that was a fantastic show. You and your partner Mystic. were performing Mystic, and I was blown away and had a blast listening to it. I can't wait to go to more shows. Well, I remember saying over the microphone, well, happy new moon, everyone, because it was a new moon that day, and you were the only person. Woo! You threw both of your arms up, and you were like, woo! And I'm like, yeah, somebody else partying on the, on and for this new moon. So what, that was kind of cool that we met on a new moon. Of course, that's you know new energy, new mm. cycles, right? So now here we are, of course, you know, um, joining up uh, as a team because we are all a big, big, fun, happy team family here at KPOV making this all happen. Um, and yeah, um, so do you use astrology in your practice with your uh, clients? Oh, or? yeah. I bring it up uh -huh. a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, oh, don't worry. You know, it's it's a new moon right now. So there's going to be a new thing starting or it's, you know, okay. the full moon. Uh -huh. And so we say, okay, well, now we're, you know, we're releasing a lot. You might feel like some purging in your emotional body. Sure. Um, definitely. And, you know, a lot of people are into it. Most of my clients will jump right in and be like, oh, yeah. Or, you know, I'll even relate some stuff to their sign. We'll explore their chart. I actually have gone through clients' charts with them in different sessions when, of course, they were open to it and wanting to do this because, it. I mean, that's why we love astrology. It shed lights on our, you know, our personalities, our personas, our tendencies, our challenges, our assets, and kind of gives that extra lens of what's really going on for us and why. And people are mostly open to that. Uh, you know, most of your clients are, has anyone ever been like, oh, astrology? What? You want to talk about that? No, that's only what guys that I date say. <laughs> <laughs> most of my clients are pretty hip with it. <gasps> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Well, congratulations on everything. I mean, Thank it you. sounds like you've really, I mean, since the last eclipse cycle was back in, it would have been about that time, the end of November. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been about six months from then. And, and this has come kind of around, you know, you can watch these eclipse cycles and work within those six month cycles too. And it sounds like you have been working with that. And now new stuff coming in right now, we just had those big, those, those two big new moons in Aries, of course, like sparking so much new stuff. And um, great. Well, hey, let's jump back into the May astrology. I've pulled up the chart because I love charts too, Whitney. I've got the chart here for May 12th. Let's talk about May 12th. May 12th is an interesting little point in, um, in May. We've got uh, Mercury in a sextile with Saturn, Mercury in a sextile with Venus, and Venus in a trine with Saturn. Now, what does that all mean? Uh, Mercury is going to still be in retrograde at this point. We're going to be working back through, um, back through Taurus here. And so, um, Mercury sextiling Saturn. This is going to be a really good point to have a grip with reality, which is what Saturn represents, to have a grip with um, responsibility, another Saturn oriented theme, and, um, also for creating any kind of rule structure, boundaries around some of the things that we are working with within this Mercury retrograde. We have this opportunity to go back and scour through uh, Taurus themes since Mercury is there. And these Taurus themes are, are very much about material, um, material comfort material possessions, you know, how comfortable we are, what type of comfortable comfort, comfortability level we have 
at this moment in our lives with our material life, you know, where we're at. Are we feeling secure? Are we feeling like we are in a place where we can be nurtured, you know, to move forward? Of course, if you're not secure and feeling safe, you know, in your home or in your life, then it can create, you know, this feeling of always being on edge, you know, not knowing where that next meal is going to come from or not knowing, you know, um, who, who your friends, you know, are going to be, you know, or, or whatever, um, what, you know, that job is going to exactly have to offer. It's all kind of a little bit at this point. We are, we are looking at that. We are looking at how comfortable we are within the discomfort is kind of what's coming up right now. Mercury being in retrograde, kind of things are a little bit um, thrown around. They're a little bit di- discombobulated, a little bit dis- dismembered, I guess, because Mercury is our mind. We can be feeling like our mind is all over the place, but we can come to a place with Taurus energy where we can be comfortable even when, you know, things feel a little unstable. Um, Taurus loves stability. Taurus is a fixed sign, doesn't really like things to change up too fast or move around too quickly. And so um, I think that there is definitely a theme that we're working with here. Now, um, then we have uh, this Mercury coming into the sextile with Saturn, creating this um this opportunity to then take responsibility you know for creating this comfort um for um allowing yourself to be comfortable within the discomfort situation discomfortable situation uncomfortable situation whatever it is um and then later on in the day just to add to this we have uh mercury sextiling venus venus is going to give a punch of love light to all of this she's going to bring balance and harmony to this situation. And um, then she's also going to be trining Saturn, which finishes out just this little triangle that's going on between these three planets, between Mercury, Saturn, and Venus. So um, yeah, you know, we were just talking about the full moon, the previous week, how it could be digging up some things from the darkest depths, you know, that we may be a little uncomfortable with. This could be part of the discomfort of this time. And by the 12th, I really think we're going to have um, just to kind of round out what I just said. By May 12th, I think we're going to have a few more um, uh, feelings that we can handle it, that we can take responsibility for the changes that need to be made or the tweaks that need to be made. And then uh, Venus is going to just like provide lots of balance and harmony for that to happen. So that's an interesting day that I'm, that I'm looking out for. I think that could be a big turning point in the, in the month and almost like a little bit of a, of a, of a pop out of, out of this eclipse season. That could be the moment that boom, we kind of really realize our place and and start to move forward in love. Then on May 14th, Mercury is going to station direct. And so we will be then moving uh, forward and things should start to clear up. Our mind should start to clear up come the middle of May. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can find some balance and, uh, and really come out of this Mercury retrograde retrograde um, on top. On May 16th, we have Jupiter joining the Taurus party. I love this because Taurus is actually the sign where they love having company. They love preparing food for, for friends, you know, and like enjoying everybody, enjoying each other. They love providing this space to nurture. And so we're having like this big Taurus party. Jupiter joins on May 16th. Anywhere Jupiter goes just brings opportunity, optimism. Um, This is also um, the chance to have big communications, to make things bigger than they are. Jupiter always expands things. And so this could feel super duper expansive um, toward the middle to the end of May. And then on May 19th, our new moon in Taurus happens 
late in the season here. Um, this is actually two days before the end of Taurus season. And so we are going to be exploring Taurus energy. And then at the very end, May 19th, going to be having that chance to invite some newness into our life within these Taurus themes. Then on May 21st, the sun moves into Gemini. And the day before that, Mars moves into Leo. So wow, that uh, last two weeks of May are definitely going to be game changers. There's going to be such different energy by the end of May than what we're feeling right now. And um, I know that everyone's excited just for the weather to be shifting and feeling different. So I think that these types of energy changes are absolutely welcome. Do you think so, Whitney? How is everything um, feeling for you as far as May? These are actually, this would be really helpful for you with your clients too, to look ahead at the astrology and kind of like work, walk people through what's going to be happening. Yeah. Well, the, the end of May is sounding pretty sweet the way you described it. It's it's always nice to to, you know, jump out of Mercury retrograde. I am a, you know, appreciator of it. I think, as we said, it's good to, you know, address the things that come up. I heard once that retrograde helps you to kind of, the things that are holding you back, you get to kind of, it, like, let's say it's like you're, you have a, a jacket on and it's stuck on a tree branch and mm. retrograde is like, turn around and like taking your you jacket like, off, <laughs> right. unstucking yourself, <laughs> unsticking yourself and uh, you can move forward afterwards. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, something else I, I wanted to to offer people, because this happened to me, is that during this time we talked about, you know, again, the end of May sounds like it's going to be really nice, but that's because we're going to release a lot. And one thing to look out for is kind of like big emotional breakdowns or if um, triggering events, I think can happen. Because again, with two eclipses and a retrograde and this, you know, Pluto energy and the Scorpio new moon, we're going to see this stuff we don't always want to have to deal with, as you were speaking to earlier, Stacey. And that can... Sometimes if we're not going to do it ourselves, something in the world will kind of bring it up for mm. us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody making a comment to you, somebody sent, you know, sending a rude email. It can just be the weirdest little trigger. The it's, weirdest. It, you, you can never even guess sometimes, you know, and we're talking about... I mean, we're talking about our emotions, you know, we're talking about our spiritual growth. We're talking about emotional growth, which is what you help your clients through. Yes, absolutely. And sometimes emotional growth doesn't, well, actually it never happens without difficulty and, and pain. You know, we're all, none of us want to be uncomfortable or in pain yet. Sometimes pain is the answer. I actually, I'm reading a book right now called The Untethered Soul. Have you heard of it? Michael uh, Singer? That sounds really familiar. I highly recommend it to anyone listening if, you know, you're kind of doing maybe some of your shadow work, trying to make some changes right now so that you can walk into a brighter, more peaceful future. But it talks about that, that, um, you know, we get these ideas about who we are and life and and they may not be true. and But we're afraid to look at them because it's painful. But he says that freedom is on the other side of pain. You go down and you let you get to that nerve that's raw and exposed. But if you can kind of, you know, see what's there and what's causing it to be sort of, you know, agitated, then you don't have to worry about things setting you off. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's what this time is for, is like mm -hmm. doing that yucky work that's unpleasant. <laughs> but then you remove that pain and you can have smoother sailing. Yeah, yeah, the 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 deep dive, you know, that eventually I and and we we need to remember too that there's, you know, as deep as you go, that's like as high as you go afterwards too, you know, and then it kind of plateaus, you know. So, it's always a little a little rocky, you know, like you're saying, it's not always fun and uh it can be fun sometimes. Sometimes you can have these breakthroughs that are like amazing, you know, but sometimes it takes time to to get to that point. This is Stacy Dredd, Galactic Ambassador here in the Cosmic Community. And because it's such a special day and a special show, uh, we're going to pull a special tarot card. We are. Oh, I'm excited for this. So I've always wanted to bring tarot cards into the cosmic community. This is the first time. And uh, of course I have, you know, them on my, my altar at home and, and I use them, but this is the, going to be the card for the month of May. 
We're just going to say that, okay? okay? Since we did maze astrology, this is the um, card and the message that your tarot deck has for the listeners here of the Cosmic Community and of KPOV and for the month of May. This is going to be an overarching, um, supportive, um, divine uh, interference here. Mm-hmm. So, ooh. There it is. It came out. What is it? Stacy? I am not joking you. I was shuffling earlier and this card came out and I thought, I want this to be the card. I want it to be the card for the audience. And it came out again. Can I just say that I was just watching her shuffle and it just, <laughs> it popped out. <laughs> this it is popped the- out and it sat, boom, perfectly looking straight up at her. And could we Crazy. get Crazy. a more beautiful card? The star card. No, it's the star. And the star. oh my God, I love that so much. So beautiful. This is, to me, it always means divine wish fulfillment. And mm. we were just talking about, you know, be brave, be strong through this time. Everybody listening, because I there can be those dark nights during this time where we think, this isn't going to get better. I'm having such a hard time. But then there's that breakthrough. And the star is really saying on the other side of this is more than you could imagine. It's this bright renewal. The star is also about just clearing and cleansing and being in the essence, in the element of yourself, of life. And then this wish, that wish upon a star that you've always had suddenly seems like it's closer than it's ever been and maybe even right in front of you. Mm. So this is just the most beautiful energy. I can't believe it came out twice. Can You, you can't make this stuff up, you know? It's nope, just, you can't. It wanted it, to and I, I knew it. It's just the way it is. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being part of the KPOV community, the Cosmic community. And I will be back next week at 4.30 p.m. for another regular program. I want to say thanks to Whitney for being here with me today. Thanks for having me as a guest. You're so welcome. And I hope you all have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you next week. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Community Podcast. More can be found at kpov.org slash the cosmic community.